Hello everyone, bringing you another video today looking at some hold all contents. Moving forward a little bit from the sort of time periods we've looked at previously, which is Great War through roughly the 1950s, circa the National Service period post Second World War. And what we're going to look at today is a hold all and contents for the 1970s. There seems to be quite a lot of 1970s related content recently on the channel. It's not been planned, but I thought I'd lean into that and have a look at some 1970s era hold all contents. Interestingly, around this time period, the hold all was certainly it's still in existence, uh, not the white cotton version we're familiar with from previous videos and that many people will be familiar with who are used to First World War and Second World War reenacting, but a green rubberized example. It was certainly still around at the time, but from speaking to chaps who served at the time, it's clear that it wasn't issued to everybody. An issue of it seems to be quite sporadic, so some men would, would have their own uh, way of carrying toiletries and, and the other items which are carried in the hold all. So anyway, without further ado, we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at the contents. So in this instance, the hold all is rather different to those that we've considered previously, which were the, the white cotton variety, which really date back to the Victorian era. This is a step forward and it's based upon the jungle hold all, which was introduced as part of the late war British jungle equipment, which was obviously really designed for the continuing war in the Far East, which didn't transpire, of course, due to the, uh, the dropping of the atomic bombs and the uh, premature ending of the Second World War. And then the GS version was introduced post-war for issue more generally. So this holdall was around, certainly in the 1950s, and was used in that time period. And this example, as we'll see a little bit later on, is actually dated to the 1970s, so still being manufactured at that time. But as I said earlier, not everyone was issued one of these from, from talking to veterans of the time period. But this is an example of the sort of contents you'd have uh, in one of these uh, around that time period, so the 1970s. And they were still around at that time period, but as I say, not everyone received one. So some people will be obviously carrying their, their items such as this, their wash kit items and so forth, in a very different manner uh, in their own way, basically. But starting over on the left-hand side, and we will talk about the hold all. Once I've looked at all the contents, we'll have a look at the hold all in a bit more detail as well. Starting on the left-hand side, we have here the, the shaving kit. The razor and spare blades, obviously a, a screwed together three-part razor, the handle, but a, fa a fairly modern example, a relatively model modern example, so you put your blade in there and screw it back together again in the, the way many people will be familiar with. Of course, you can still use these today. Um, you would still get the blades for them and so forth, and then a little blade holder here, which is a neat little thing, Wilkinson sword blades in there. So tucked both of those in the end compartment there, they fit rather nicely. And then, of course, the shaving cream. And this is a, a Colgate Menthol Cool brushless shaving cream. An original tube of that. Oop, the way up. And we looked at some of these contents, the shaving cream, the shaving soap, bars of soap and so forth, in a separate video recently, because I've collected quite a lot of these now to put together soldier small kit from various different time periods. So that's the shaving kit at the end there with the, the shaving cream and the, the razor and blades there. We then also have a toothpaste, and this is a tube of McLean's toothpaste. You can see there. Definitely of the time period, this came with another tube uh, in a separate packet, and that had an, an offer on it. Uh, the same style of packaging, same style of printing on the, the label and everything. That had an offer on it that expired in 1969, so this is certainly around that time period, early 70s at least. McLean's toothpaste and plastic handled nylon bristle, bristle uh, toothbrush, if that'll come into focus. There we go made in Hong Kong, as you can see there. So, toothbrush and toothpaste. Simple little comb, little plastic comb, British made plastic comb. Nothing special about that. Little pair of scissors, uh, the little pair of round nose scissors, just a useful little thing to have in your hold all, uh, cutting various different things, including your nails, and going right the way back to the, the Great War. Uh, there's mention of men carrying some method of, carry, of trimming the nails in the hold all, be it a little pair of nail scissors. Obviously biting them isn't very sanitary necessarily when you're in the field, so having a little pair of scissors, that's something that shows up right the way through in, into photos from the Falklands and, and the Gulf, of course. It's a very sensible thing to carry with you, so I've included those there based on that inference, as it were, a useful thing to have with you, little pair of scissors. And then we have here a bar of, of period life voice soap, still in its wrapper. Now, obviously, generally, this would be carried in some form of soap dish, probably a plastic soap dish by this point, uh, but I've left that in the wrapper just as an example, you can see there. Um, so, Life Boy toilet soap in white, rather than the, the more common pink, but white was certainly around at this time period. 
introduced in the 60s or 50s, if I remember correctly. But anyway, bar of life boy soap there. And then again, as part of the wash kit, a green flannel. This is a, a would be a privately purchased item. It's not an issue item. Uh, it's a British made example. I picked up a few of these uh, and they're, they're good for this sort of time period, 70s, 80s. There's some photographs, again, from the Falklands of 82. Uh, of course, a little bit outside the time period. Look, we're looking at but of men using these when shaving uh, and washing uh, little green flannels. So included one of those there. Very sensible thing to have, of course. Just tucked in the end pocket there along with a tin of foot and body powder you can see here very much very similar to the, the second world war and earlier styles of uh, foot powder tins but this is a post-war foot and body powder so a slightly different thing an essence essence company limited as you can see there so including that in the hold all here not always carried in the hold all of course but it's quite convenient with that large pocket at the end there to carry it in there. And of course, this will roll and fold up and can be tied tied together in quite a neat little package or just rolled from one end and tied around. It will tie up relatively neat, neat package there for carrying in, in your, your pack or your rear pouches on the, uh, the web equipment. So that's the hold all and contents. I'll remove the contents now and we'll have a quick look at this, uh, look at the hold all in a little bit more detail. Those of you who are familiar with US kit will probably think this looks very familiar and you're quite right. It is essentially based on US practice. During the Second World War, the US had a hold all very similar to this for use with toiletries and so forth. The great advantage of the design is it can be worn around the waist. If you're washing in uh, a stream or a river, for example, you can actually tie this around your waist and have all your accoutrements there, easy to get at, which is very sensible. The design in, in British service was introduced with the jungle hold all, which is part of the late war jungle equipment, as already said. And then post-war, as already said, it was introduced uh, for general issue. Uh, it was reintroduced for general issue, slightly modified design, but that's what we have here in this rubberized green material. See so binding all the way around the edge and then the ties here, which can be used to obviously roll it and tie it up, but also can be used to tie it around the waist. If we look under the flap at the top here, we can see we do have some clear stamping here, which has actually been over stamped or re-stamped quite to messily there but we have a date of 1978 hold all gs and then we have i can straighten this out enough to see we have a contract contract number stamp in there as you can see as well so that's the stamps on this and as i say as you can clearly see it's a 1970s dated example so they were still around at the time so there we are that's a look at the sort of 1970s era setup of hold all and contents for a british soldier of that sort of time period so there we are. Hope you'd have found it interesting looking at that. These small kit videos do tend to be fairly popular. Uh, I think they're certainly interesting to look at. I'm always interested in, in just what the soldier carried, uh, some examples of the, the small kit that was carried at various different time periods. Obviously, the soldier's needs don't really change in that regard. You still need your, your soap and your shaving kit and so forth. But obviously, the designs of the, the bits and pieces and the products that were available vary quite considerably throughout time. So it's interesting to be able to put together sets of these uh, little sets of these personal effects and, and hopefully having a look at them is interesting as well. If you have found the video interesting and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell with the notification button down below. And that will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as ever, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter are all linked down below. And of course, if you'd like to get in touch, but you don't really use social media, there is an email address down below as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.